Hi ladies and gentlemen, today is June 7th, 2014. And today's a, a day of remembrance for me. It was on this day in 2008 that my beloved wife Carol died uh, from ovarian cancer. And I only bring that up because th this has more significance than even that. We are entering into the time now of what's known in the Christian religion is Pentecost. We're right in that time frame. And a lot of things have been happening. And so this video is going to show you uh, an ordinance that we're going to do uh, on Ensign Peak in Salt Lake City today. And it, it really has to do ongoing with the Bundy situation. Not just the Bundys, but everything that's happening that the government's causing to happen to our food supply, to our land. This land, as I've said before, is to be God's land. There is no, not supposed to be any king over it. The people are to rule, uh, and that's been twisted from a Republican, constitutional republic to a democracy, which it's not supposed to be a democracy. Certain rights are to be guaranteed. But things have been shifted around, and if, you know, when you try to point these things out, people make fun of you for not being an attorney or, or whatever. Well, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights are very simple. God is pleased by simplicity, and the Constitution really is simple. Uh, and really, so are the commandments of God. They're simple, too. Uh, men try to make them more than what they really are, but basically it comes down, of course, to two things both in government and in our personal lives. And that is, we love the Lord thy God with all our heart, might, mind, and strength. And the second is like it unto it. You love your neighbor as yourself. And these two are all the law and the prophets. Well, we could go into a lot of detail, but I want to jump into what my, my deal is today. Uh, we've seen a lot of signs in the sun. Uh, BP Earthwatch showed that there was actually a cross that came out of the sun, uh, one of the... CMEs there, uh, coronal mass ejections, took the form of a cross. Now, you know, you could say, well, big deal, you know, uh, things happen, you know, it doesn't mean anything. But the point is, is that they are happening. We're, we're seeing all these comets, we're see and of course they've always been there, but the point is we have the ability to see them now, okay, when we didn't before. Signs in the heavens, in the sun, in the moon, in the earth and beneath the earth, the point is that we're aware of them now. Even if they've been going on for millions of years, our, our technology is the point where we're aware of these things now. We can see these things. I think that's the point. We can be aware of them. We can see them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Well, the government has declared war on the people. We've talked about that before. You know, they've attacked the Amish milk farmers, the raw milk. And, of course, all this is political and corporate control and I realize that but the point is it's happening Amish raw milk farmers the whole San Joaquin Valley almost in California the water shut off all for a supposedly a fish the Bundy Ranch with the turtles other ranches with birds or fish or whatever the Red River area New Mexico the government seizing the land and and taking it out of the hands of the people so that they can produce this is a siege warfare, as I've said before. Now, I, I could go into a lot of detail about how evil this is and that it's not right. I don't care what, you know, Theodore Roosevelt did in 1906. I don't care what the Sierra Club says. It's a war upon mankind, okay? That, yeah, we should take care of the earth, no doubt, you know? But this concept is being used to destroy our species. And that's wrong and God says so okay and what's interesting about this is atheists will say ha huh, you know God yeah right uh, but all this has been predicted why because it's happened before you know history repeats itself what we're going to do today is something that Joel commands us to do the book of Joel is in the Old Testament and if you read it it's exactly for the last days. There's no mistaking about it. And I read the whole thing here, but I haven't got time to do that. Go read Joel. It's only three chapters long. It talks about these evil forces that, that destroy the food supply and why they do it. 
it talks about the fact that there is this northern army that comes against the people. Now, isn't that interesting that we have NORTHCOM that is allied with DHS? It's almost by the very name, the Northern Army. Incredible, isn't it? And, and Clive and Bundy and all of you ranchers, I really, I hope you hear this. Because you all really are the, the tip of the spear in this thing. God is using you. I know you already know that. Go read Joel, all three chapters. A couple of things here. It talks about the fields being wasted and the land being wasted and, and the crops failing because of this, of this evil influence that's shutting down the food supply. And it talks about the fact that the husbandmen, meaning these, these overlords, these government people, should be ashamed of themselves. Yet, not further, very far along in this, the Lord tells his people to not be ashamed, never be ashamed for talking about him and, and what he's doing and, and their efforts to to use this land as their inheritance. I wish I could read the whole thing because it's it's really it's really wonderful. Please do so. Chapters one, two, and three, it'll take you maybe fifteen or twenty minutes. And then you can go back and you know once you read it you can go back and look at it again. Well I was going to talk a lot more about this, but I believe that this day and by the time you see this, you may agree, or maybe nothing will happen. Who knows? But what we're going to do today, what you're going to see, Brand is coming up from Las Vegas. We're meeting here. Uh, there's a reason why we're coming to the Rocky Mountains. Uh, you know, it's interesting that we were impressed to do this here in Salt Lake, in the mountains. We're going to go to Ensign Peak, which is above Salt Lake City. Uh, it's considered the, the, the Mount of Zion is really what is considered here in, in, by the Mormons in this, in this country. Uh, but I think there's some other reasons why it is that. Uh, but look at this. You might say, well, that's kind of silly, you know, everything, uh, you know, it doesn't happen in Salt Lake City. Uh, NSA built their largest and most sophisticated spying facility just, I, I'm in Salt Lake right now, just 20 miles south of here, maybe not even that. So, there is something about these evil people that they know that something's going to happen here and they want to be here to try to, to see it coming. Now that might not make any sense, but remember Herod knew that there was going to be Jesus born and he sent out his people to kill all the, the, the boy babies. Do you remember that? And historically that's not exactly what happened, but the point is, is that, that the, the event occurred to some extent, okay? Well, something's going to happen here. And the NSA and, and, the, and the evil people that run these governments want to try to stop it. Okay, so that's why they're here. That's why NSA built it here in Salt Lake. There's some other reasons, but that's certainly one of them. So Brandon and I realized we were reading Joel. Actually, he read Joel first, and he said, Roy, go look at Joel 2.1. And I did that, and then I read through the whole chapter, and I called him, I said, Brandon, when are you coming? <laughs> when are we going to meet in Salt Lake? He says, I'm coming right now. So what you're going to see here is we're going to fulfill a requirement by Joel. Let me read that to you real quick because I want you to understand. He said this not once but several times. Okay, in, in chapter 1, he says, in verse 14, he says, Sanctify ye a fast. We are fasting right now. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders. Okay? Then in chapter 2, one, he says, Blow ye the trumpet, that's the shofar, in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mount. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh. Okay? And then, what's interesting is he says it again in verse 15. Now, anytime you see this, this instruction to do something twice, you have to start listening. Okay? Those are key. In the mouth of two or three witnesses. Verse 15. Again, he says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation. So, ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to see here is this ritual, this ceremony, this plea to God to send his army against this northern army that's invading us. And that's really what's happening. North Common DHS are this northern army, and they are invading our life supply, the food, the land. This is God's land. This is the land of the eternal king. Not anybody that sits in Washington, D.C. or in Europe. 
or China or anywhere else. So uh, this will take a little time. This will probably be a very long video. Uh, and we're not ashamed to do this. We're putting it out there, okay? God says not to be ashamed of what we're doing, so we're not going to be. The husbandmen that are trying to destroy your families, they need to be ashamed. So here we are. Please read Joel. Then maybe even stop this video right now. Go read Joel chapters 1 through 3. And and then listen to, to the ritual later. Uh, but it's coming up now. Thank you. All right, we're hiking up uh, Ensign Peak. You actually parked down below there. You can see the city down there. But it's quite a hike up here. Uh, this is work in and of itself. Uh, so we're going to follow the trail on around, and that's where we're going is up there. And uh, we're still probably 15 minutes away from the peak, maybe 20. A lot of wind up here. We're up on Ensign Peak. Let me show you around a little bit. Here's Salt Lake Valley right there. So you know what we're looking at. The state capitol is right there. And the temple, the Dildas Temple is right over in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's kind of hard. Uh, on out west, south of there is Utah Valley. Here's Rest Lake. There's Salt Lake over that way. And then on up north to go to Idaho. And here, here they are right here. We made it. Okay, what uh, we're doing right now is we're placing ashes on us. We're wearing not very good clothes, which in today's vernacular would be sackcloth. And this now we're putting ashes on us to symbolize our request for mercy from God and trying to be humble before Him, recognize that we have our sins and, and shortcomings, falling short of the mark. Barukata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Peleel, Peleel, Peleel Bore Ami We humble ourselves before you. We ask your forgiveness. We are lowly men of heart. The ordinances which we are about to perform we do in all humility. Forgive us of our shortcomings, of falling short of the mark. O Holy Father, listen to our pleas this day, we beg of you, for the salvation of your children and for the dispersion of the evil ones. Hallelujah. Bahashem Yeshua HaMashiach. days the Lord commanded that his representatives go to the high mountains those here are how we interpret it the Rocky Mountains this is Ensign Peak this is Mount Zion here in the west and we have a couple of ordinances that we're going to do here but I want you all to go read Joel before we proceed if you haven't already done so I will just say here a couple of verses out of Joel just so that you know where we are. Awake ye drunkards, and weep, and howl. 
all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. And he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid waste my vineyard and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. The field is wasted and the land mourneth. For the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up. The oil languisheth. If you understand what's happening today, especially in this country, you'll understand these words. Gird yourselves and lament, ye priests. Howl, ye ministers of the cloth, ye ministers of my God. For the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Second chapter, I want to read one verse to begin with. Verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. And then verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders. He says it twice, so that's why we are here. We are on Mount Zion, we're blowing the trumpets. Commanded twice in Joel. We, we have another prayer to say. This one is to banish the remnants of evil from these mountains and valleys, commanding them under the name of the Lord to lead. just say this in English. It'll be a lot easier that way. O oh Lord our God, we ask you in the name of your Son and in your holy name and through the power of the Holy Melchizedek Priesthood that your armies will come here to these mountains and valleys and banish the evil from here so that this may become a place that is dedicated, consecrated, and set apart for the gathering of your children to seek safety in these latter days, that those who do not want to take up arms against their neighbor may flee to Zion. But in preparation, the evil from here must be taken away. And we ask you, O Heavenly Father, to banish this evil beginning this day. Send forth your armies. Convince those who are opposing you that this is no longer a place for them. And we invoke one of the attributes of you, our Father, one of your holy names. We ask in that attribute, that holy name, spelled Lamed Aleph Wow. Lao. 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 Baha Shem Lao. Aman. Amen. Another prayer. We ask the Lord to fight our battles, for we are not strong enough. We must stand on our own as far as we are able, but in the end, 
the Leviathan is too large for us and we must acknowledge that the Lord's hand must be brought to bear in our lives and against those who seek the lives of our loved ones. Therefore, Pe-le-el, 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 our Father who art in heaven, the Father of our spirits, and the Father of our flesh. The Father of the one that you sent, the Holy One of Israel, to show us the way. In your holy name we ask that you fight our battles for us so that the good may flee here to Zion for safety. And we invoke the attribute of our Father, of the eternal King of Heaven, El Melech Naaman. God, our righteous King, and His attribute, which is another of His holy names, spelled in Hebrew, Mem, Beit, He. And for this day we will pronounce it, Mabeh, Bahashem Mabeh, Peleel. May the Lord fight our battles and provide a land here for the just and the meek and those who do not seek to lift up arms against their neighbor. But that this will be a bastion of power because the Lord will be here. Adonai Eloheinu. Yahweh Eloheinu. Bahashimo. Kodesh. Et. Yahoshua, Amashiach, Amen. days later is the day of Pentecost which is tomorrow. Three o'clock yesterday morning a solar flare called the hydro flare came off the Sun in the exact shape of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's never been seen before. I think we need to pay heed to the signs in the heavens and in the earth beneath. Amen. 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 Okay, we placed the tefillin on Brand, who's going to offer a prayer of his heart. And I'm sorry about the wind out here, but that's one of the difficulties. We tried to use a microphone, but it just that wouldn't work either. So we're just doing it with the images and as much sound as we can get. So here we are. Brand has the tefillin on, and he's going to offer a prayer in his heart. Brand, it's all yours. My brothers and sisters. Enzyme Peak with Roy Potter, Nick Thornton, and myself, Rand Thornton. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. You know, this this is Zion. And this is the true Zion, not the pseudo Zion that you hear about most of the time in the news media and overseas. This is a true Zion. It needs to be restored. These fat valleys need to be restored to their sacredness and in order for God to receive us. And this is what we have in our hearts, and we do it out of love uh, and joy for each of you. We're many generations here now. We're in the year 2014, and when the original pioneers came here in the 1800s, I doubt very seriously if they envisioned what it looks like today. And, and after all these generations, there's so many Latter-day Saints here that are wonderful people 
Uh, they have their wonderful families here. They're looking for guidance and direction by the Holy Spirit. And that's what we are trying to invoke here, is the Holy Spirit to descend, as Joel said, to be upon all flesh in these last days. And it's up to us as individuals to receive that Spirit, the Spirit of our Heavenly Father, which takes on, there's many components to it. As I mentioned earlier, there was a, a Hydra solar flare that went off 3 o'clock yesterday morning, an exact replica of the cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And typically, it takes about two days to reach the earth, which will be tomorrow, which is the day of Pentecost. Now, back in April 14th, 15th, uh, actually that whole week of the Passover, we were at the Bundy Ranch and we witnessed a transition uh, which I think will go throughout the, the earth in, in that the, the righteous people, such as the Bundys, that stand up and stand uh, for righteousness against all evil. You know, I've talked to Cliven before, he understands the 93rd section or 98th section doctrine and covenants on the Constitution of the United States and the 101st. He understands when it says anything more or less than this cometh of evil. He understands the commandment to uh, uh, abolish all evil, to forsake all evil. And he has taken a stand for our, not just for his family, but for our, our whole country, if not the whole world. And I want you to look towards this man and his sacrifice that he has done. And take it into your hearts and realize that this one man, the last man standing in Clark County as a rancher, has made a huge sacrifice for everyone. Now I'd like to say a prayer at this point in time. And Brad, if I may ask also, ensure that everyone knows that these blessings are for all people, not just the Latter-day Saints. Of course, uh, you know, these valleys that we're talking about, the day will come when everybody, as Roy has said earlier, that do, that do not want to take up arms against their neighbors will flee here. All face denominations. And, you know, that they will come, eventually every knee shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus is the Christ. And this is his gathering place. Our most kind and gracious Father who art in heaven, we give unto thee thanks this wonderful day for all our many blessings that thou hast bestowed upon us in this valley. We thank thee, Heavenly Father, for thy guidance and direction, the great prophets that thou hast given us in the scriptures, and thy spirit, which thou hast at this time bestowing upon all flesh. We're thankful for, Heavenly Father, for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the great sacrifice that he made for us as individuals, and taken upon himself the sins of the world, that we might be delivered from death and hell. Father, we pray at this time that thou would bless this valley and all these wonderful people and bless the valleys beyond and those wonderful people and that thy spirit will whisper to them, come hither, come hither into Zion. In the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. And if I may end, I just have a quick thing. I'd like to do this as a second time. In the name of our Father, and in the name of His Son, and by the power of the Holy Melchizedek Priesthood, I want to ensure that all who hear this will understand that these valleys and mountains are consecrated, dedicated, and set apart to be ruled by the King of Heaven, El Melech Niamen, and that no other shall stand here but will flee. This land is dedicated for the gathering of those who are pure in heart and who seek peace, not deceit. And he will practice the commandments of God. And I say these things in his holy name.
Yahweh Elohim, and his son, Yahushua HaMashiach. Well, uh, I couldn't video all of it because the wind was so bad, but you can see what we were up to, and I'll explain it again at the end of the video. That's the top of Ensign Peak there with the Pillar of Stones. Uh, this is looking east towards University of Utah, uh, east part of Utah Valley. I'm sorry, Salt Lake Valley. We're really worn out here right now. I just want to do a quick panorama. This is we got to hike down this trail here, and uh, here are the mountains here. There the guys go, and you won't be able to see it very well now because I've come down off the mountain. But uh, there's the Great Salt Lake over there. Okay, well we're back in the city, and uh, as you can see, I haven't taken the ash off of my face yet. <laughs> Primarily so you'll know we really did this, okay? Uh, now look, wisdom to the world is foolishness to God, and often vice versa. You know, what, what those who believe in God consider to be wisdom, the world considers foolish. Well, you know, I'll place my bets with the former. That is, that the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. God is simple, and by ritual, we show our intent, the intent of our heart. We make it visible. We make a manifestation of it. So we have very much made some errors here. It was very difficult in the wind, the climb to the top of the mountain. The number of people up there weren't, wasn't really a problem, but we had a lot of questions, and so we'd get interrupted. I want you to understand, please, that we did our very best on this and the, the the bottom line is to follow what the book of Joel said to do and really it's throughout the biblical uh, literature about what we are to do so I'll end the video here just explaining that the land of Zion the, the place to gather where you don't want to take up arms against your neighbors is a special place and I can't tell you exactly right now where it is but basically the idea is going to be from Canada to the US Mexico border maybe a little south of there and from the basically the the Rocky Mountains possibly the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains all the way to the eastern slope of the Sierras now where do I get that well it would take me too long to explain but that's kind of where we've arrived. And it, this isn't just an LDS Mormon doctrine. We've really looked at this closely, okay? Uh, none of the people that you've seen here today talking are LDS or Mormon. We have LDS Mormon roots and we understand some of those important connections. Uh, and we appreciate the sacrifices that the LDS Mormon people made in establishing this land. Here. But of course, it's really God that establishes it. And that's the bottom line here. This land is not to have a king or a president that acts like a king or a government that usurps the authority of the people, the freedoms, the liberties of the people. This land is land that belongs to the king of the universe, the eternal creator. And that's the point that I want to make. The king of this land is El Melek Nehemiah, the father of our spirits and the father of our flesh. How else could it be? This land is dedicated, consecrated, 
and set apart for the rightful king. Adonai Eloheinu, Yahweh Eloheinu, and the rightful heir, in our opinion, Yahushua HaMashiach.